Hello, hello everyone. Hello America. Hello to the audience here. And uh, where are we here? We're in India. I'm in India. And um, I just want to start um, with this, but with the introductions and who uh, we have here in front of us here. I will start with you, Hardeep. Hello, am I? It's Hardeep. My name is this. I live uh, in India, in uh, New Delhi. Next. Hello, everyone. My name is Rahul. This is my name, Sign. I live in Shandigar. And that's uh, where I live. And um, my name is Aline. That's, that's my name sign. And I'm from Delhi. I used to live in America and uh, for uh, about 30 years. And now here I am. I, for the last five years, I've been here in India. In a couple of days, it will be my five years uh, anniversary of living here. Uh, time has flown. And our topic here tonight will be, um, uh, you know, what we've seen in the last five years and, um, and, and our two guests uh, who've been born and raised in India and how ISL has changed and uh, spread throughout the world and how it's changed here in India. And um, here uh, it's tw in America, it's uh, 22 or 23 years of, but International Sign Language Day. Um, so we have this is perfect timing to have such a, a an, an event and how do we um, how ISL is growing and spreading throughout. Um, at at first, um, you know, we can explain, um, and then we can ask our guests more about that. And so, what I do, I work for a company named Yunki. This is the the sign for the that company. <clears throat> what I do for this company is I manage, I co-manage. Um, my goal here is for everyone to have accessibility, to provide ASL, uh, ISL, um, provide services for them, translation services from uh, spoken to ISL into written ISL. Um, we would like to get this widespread, provide different services out there, uh, spread awareness, educate the people, um, spread joy through news. Um, in the past, we haven't had anything like that. So for, for the past year, we've really um, been trying to bring great awareness to this and we've made great connections in doing so. Uh, I noticed that the deaf team that we have has grown to 13 deaf on the team currently. All right, thank you. Hadeep, you're next. This is uh, the name sign for the company. Uh, my goal is uh, I'm a deaf uh, business owner. I make t-shirts, uh, try to get those out. Uh, again, just to spread awareness to the language that we use, provide support for deaf artists. Um, we hope to see that growing. I've been working with Aleem, and secondly, we've I've got different projects that we're working on. We're we're filming, we're producing, um, spreading the information out there uh, through music as well. Uh, I know that music is is a, is a hearing thing, but we're trying to provide access to the music world using ISL. So what we do is we watch the, the music and then we select um, the signs in ISL and we put out a video. Wow. Uh, so, so very, so very different. So what, what I do for work is um, I, my I have a job here in India. It's an NGO um, here, here million. And this is the sign. 
And uh, in my do, my projects, I focus on uh, trying to attract different NGOs, um, such as schools, companies, um, de- and deaf leaders. And we all get together. And the goal is to um, get one million deaf people uh, and, and to transform um, our learning and education system, job accessibility, and different a- accesses to different um, uh, uh, countrywide things. And so that's what, and I also do, um, I do the freedom signs, uh, shirts as, as well. And I support and, and, uh, help the business growth and spread awareness here in India. Um, so I do have a question for you. So why, um, why, why are we focusing or why are you focusing so much on IS, ISL? Why is there more focus on that? Um, um, just a short background on myself. I re- remember I moved to India uh, in 2016, uh, September of 2016. I got got here and I and I knew I had to learn ISL, and so I started um, uh, looking on Google and looking uh, looking at ASL and see see if they have access to I- ISL. And I saw that there was plenty of plenty of that, but I was uh, plenty of ASL opportunities, but not ISL. So I, was, I didn't know how really to learn. So I started asking around and uh, got a lot of help. And so I'm getting better. So now um, it seems as if now there's more awareness of ISL on online. And so we can always already see that transformation. So I'm asking you, you both, um, how how you've seen that, I, that ISL transformation? How you, do you see it growing? Have you seen it grow? And this is Rahul here. Um, growing up, uh, uh, there's just been, you know, there wasn't a lot of exposure to that. Uh, I grew up in a deaf family, so we use sign within, you know, within our circle, um, at school, you know, the school for the deaf, uh, that the language is used there in the educational system. So that's where I learned, um, sun sign, but not quite enough, you know, just in society, um, there was no open-mindedness, no likeness. There was no room for growth in ISL, for, for ISL. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on one second, Raul. Can you slow down? You you gave a sign and I'm not sure. Oh, the state, sorry, the states. Okay, so the states of India, you know, there were small little uh little areas if you will but none of them crossed over they all stayed to themselves secluded there was no video relay there was no communication way back when right so wherever you were that's where you stayed now the transformation is just is is out of this world with the technology and uh facebook social media youtube you name it, the news, the opportunity is out there. You can, you, you, the language is more recognized now in all the states. So it's, we're able to connect with each, with each other, whereas it was not like that um, when I was younger. So I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with the technology, the influence of that. Um, we didn't need it back then when we didn't have technology, but the internet uh, seems to be the solution. It's allowing us to cross over to different villages, different areas to communicate with each other. And we have more of a um, universal, if you will, where uh, we can communicate with other countries as well. So who knows in the future what what communication is going to look like? Um, Hardeep? I also had deaf parents and um, were they, they weren't really that aware of sign and deafness. And so when I was born, um, I, was sign, I wanted to sign. They said, no, 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 we shouldn't, we shouldn't sign. Um, we should try to learn how to talk. You should be practicing how to, how to speak. And uh, so, and so I learned it through my, my friends, but, uh, and I learned that signing was better. Hold on one second. Um, your, your friends. So were you saying that you were friend signed? Okay. So my, my parents, my deaf parents would, um, their friends didn't sign much and they didn't encourage us to, to sign and encourage us to, to use speech. 
So I practiced speaking and went to speech therapy and I didn't uh, really have a connection to uh, ISL. And then I went to a hearing and I also went to a hearing school. And so the, I didn't, any, un, I didn't understand anybody at the deaf school. So I went to a hearing school and started learning, uh, you know, kind of gestures and I was getting better and because of sign language and it really helped me grow. Hold on one second. So did you say you went to a hearing school for, so, so, I, I, so you first went to a hearing school, then you went to a deaf school. Is that right? Yes, that is right. That's correct. Yeah, I went went to the hearing school, then uh, moved to the deaf school. And uh, the parents finally realized, well, and they were hoping that the hearing school would help me um, grow and really hoping for that, but it didn't work out. Um, and I kind of just was kind of stabilized. But, you know, I, I wanted to go to deaf school. I went to a deaf school and learned to sign and and um, and it was a bit much better fit for me. So um, and they were happy to leave me there, and I, I really blossomed there uh, through the interactions of uh, working uh, with other people and through sign language. So um, and and the teachers there, um, Anoidia, uh Deaf Social Society, um, no, Noistia for short. Um, School would teach some basic general knowledge things, and I was, you know, was involved in a lot of different things. So then I moved to uh, Delhi and uh, started learning. Um, hold, on, hold on one second. That sign. Uh, uh, and then I set up an uh, NGO, um, Contrum Grow. And that was uh, the goal was to train um, for deaf empowerment. And so I got really involved in that and was very. Uh, impact, impactful and changed my life. And, um, and then, you know, so, you know, deaf hood and signing and all that. So it really helped me grow. And, and now um, I, I see COVID as a huge, you know, impact. And so people are really focused on the internet and, um, and coming up with ideas. And uh, so we came up with a hashtag ISL one, two, three, four means uh, like a story, like a poetry sort of thing, ISL so story. So one through five. Um, so we use that hashtag and it's, um, and people really uh, um, jumped on that and saw all these ISL stories in this hashtag and it blew up um, on social media. Um, that hashtags are powerful. And this is Alim here. I just wanted to add to that or I wanted to ask a question. So with COVID now, you know, um, Unique or Yunki, um, you're making movies, right? And uh, there's there's entertainment, educational videos that you guys are making. It's not like you're just sitting at home, right? Um, you're watching, you're making these videos and watching all these different channels. So, um, so you keep, um, it's in um, Bangalore, and that's a sign for it. And um, on the first of March, I went went to a camp and um, a translating translating or interpreting camp. So we only did uh, translate. It was no planning, no visions, just um, translation work only. And then um, and I stayed there, and uh, we made some videos. Um, um, so, and then COVID hit and I was stuck there and I couldn't move back home. So I spent six months there and, uh, I wasn't with my family. We were far apart. So I thought, well, what can I do with this time? And I, I wanted to go back home. Uh, there was no flights flying anywhere. So I was there, stuck there. So I was, you know, and I was lo alone and lonely. So I spent some time thinking and I saw a lot of deaf people out there. What were they doing? Are they staying home as well? Are they spending time alone as well? So I felt um, I, I got to continue to spread the awareness, but there was no sharing. You know, we'd been shut down. Schools were shut down. It seems like, you know, the Internet wasn't um, – we, we had access, but people were kind of just bored and more uh, really – you know, they had Facebook and, you know, Facebook Live and Instagram – 
And so th- that stuff was really growing. And okay, so then I saw as I was seeing that growing, but there was no real awareness and education. And um, it was just more of um, pleasure, sort of fun talk. It was so I was planning and hoping that, um, you know, it would only be, you know, three, you know, about three months that I could work things through. So then in January, I made the announcement of the Deaf Channel. And uh, we set that up and uh, spread the awareness, ISL, um, general knowledge, news, and um, to share that with deaf people. So when they started to see and see more and broaden the horizons a bit. And so, um, and I wanted to uh, spread the education. So we started a second. So we did the si- sign medium. So that different Indian languages and um, and for for us it was for uh, ISL and access and education uh, uh, online education and we just started with um, children and that went from children all the way to adults and so I reached out and or well, asking deaf people what are we doing so many of them had passed the 12th grade but after that um, they were frustrated with their jobs they weren't getting promoted and didn't have much confidence they weren't really prepared and they really but they really wanted to learn uh, they wanted to learn such things like financing cooking learn how to um, stitching and sewing or how to do makeup so um, we, we we needed more of higher education and so so we started to set up this online education and that connected over to say uh, um, teaching them how like financing and how to grow your finances, how to set up a shop, uh, all different skills. A um, lot of, a lot of things that the, the Indian government was not doing for us. And, and it was really hard. Some private companies weren't, um, were having tough times growing and uh, we were, re- you know, they were reaching out and ask, asking for favors, and, but they weren't independent. But we wanted to be more independent. So, um, you know, a lot of hearing businesses were taken off, but not so much deaf businesses. So, the idea of setting up that online education with the goal of um, how to set up businesses, encouraging uh, um, and, and pushing uh, for deaf growth in, in, in India, and setting up all these uh, financing and learning how to do different skills. Hardeep, you wanted to add something? So yeah, I'm sitting here watching your story and I'm, man, am I inspired right now? Because I'm thinking back when I was younger as a kid, I had no access to the language, sign language. You know, I, I focused, focused on, ASL. on ASL, but not, not ISL. And now as, you know, Rahul is sitting here setting up all these channels and creating more access for us. I mean, it's, it's great how we are just being flooded with all the media out there. Um, so now deaf children have access to ISL. Uh, the growth is just tremendous and um, it's, it's great. Yep. Plus I see the, um, this with such as this, you know, thing, you know, like this, but COVID uh, hitting, you know, and interpreting and, uh, you know, and, and, doing more of online things. Um, there's more deaf women involved as well too. So um, that they're starting to pop up as well. Uh, though in the past, it wasn't, um, yeah. deaf women were not allowed to be more, to be involved and they were not. So we're seeing more deaf women and we're really happy to see deaf women involved in more and more of these um, these type of things. Um, I, I know um, we're here all, we're all men panel, but maybe next time we can pull in um, a deaf female. I think um, I remember when I when I came here um, in 2016. RPWD um, rights people rights with disabilities. It's the equivalent to the American ADA. RPWD passed um, in December of 2016, and it was um, signed into law. And uh, Hold on, wait, wait, hold. Can you hold on one second? One second. When? So our uh, was signed when? Okay, in January, June. So we're all hoping um, our 
RPD, RPWD, we're um, hoping it. So now uh, RPWD, we have it now, and um, and that provides access to sign language interpreters. Um, has um, certain mandates for deaf children, uh, requiring um, them to learn ISL. Um, if they want an interpreter, you you have to provide it. And uh, so we're trying to spread awareness about that. And so you know that India has those rights. We can use that RPWD um, and use that to uh, expand interpreting services. Now, uh, I have a question. Um, so the deaf, uh, as a deaf Indian, um, you know, and hearing people in India, um, but as a deaf person in India, um, do you feel like they pity you or they feel they have a positive outlook on, on the deaf community? Um, and we're, we're speaking of the, the Indian community, hearing com community versus the deaf community. Can you share more on that? This is Hardeep here. Uh, previously, as I just explained, uh, when I was younger, with my parents being deaf um, back in the day, there was really no pride to be deaf, you know, to be able to identify as someone who is deaf. Uh, there was nothing for me to look up to. The, it wasn't anything like that. And I, and I don't fault my parents for that. They didn't know any better. There wasn't enough information out there. But now looking online, the accessibility that we have, knowing that we can identify as deaf people and be proud of that. Um, it's, you know, it, thanks to the internet, it's, it's brought so much awareness to, to those who may be curious about what deafness is. Like, what does it mean? Gestures. You know, you notice that they're doing gestures, but it's not just the gesturing, it's actually a language, right? So it really has made a great impact out there. Um, it's definitely spreading, definitely, especially like my shirt, it says learning sign language inclusive. So we're trying to encourage everybody out there to, to, to be inclusive. We want to get the word out there. And that's something we've been working on. Mm -hmm. Rahul, did you want to say something? Um, the deaf people, um, back, way back, the, it was kind of more of their pity. Oh, I'm so sorry. So you're deaf. And, um, and uh, you, it's so unfortunate. Um, and, and that was the, the, oh, hold on one second, second. Just hold on one second. Okay. In India, yeah. You know, the, in India, they would, their perspective was, oh, um, uh, I f they feel that God gave them such bad luck. And that because they can't hear or your parents, or maybe something was wrong with their parents, maybe uh, they're being penalized for something they did in the past and um, that caused a, a, a deaf child. So it's kind of a very negative connotation of deafness. But um, I identify as deaf. I love deaf culture and the language. And I didn't at the time I didn't have anything. No, um, back then I didn't have the confidence. I was more timid. Um, and so as I was growing up, um, I had deaf parents and, and they, there was no such thing as deaf pride or deaf identity. There was, and it was just more of just, you know, an everyday sort of thing, but you know, the, with the relatives and they, and they would, their perspective on us was, Oh, I'm so sorry that you're deaf, but there was no, um, there was no sense of you should be proud. And, and, um, and it was viewed as a negative, um, so negative thing. So going out outside of India, then, uh, I learned, uh, what a deaf identity is. And, and so in 2013, uh, first time I left India and I went out to another country and I saw that, uh, people had deaf, deaf people had deaf cultures and deaf pride and deaf identities. And when I came back to India, I told my family, I said, we have an identity, we have culture, you know, we should love IS, uh, ISL, be proud of our language. And so we saw, uh, I saw them grow in, in, and more independent as well. And, you know, and the relatives in the community and um, started to be more aware and see that deaf people could do more than what they thought. And they saw, you know, they saw the language more and they saw that the deaf community was growing uh, and stronger. And with that innate ISL, and you could see that the deaf community is growing and being more uh, visual. And they realized that, uh, 
So the many people don't have never met a deaf person and hold on one second. Okay, hold. Just can you back right up for a sec? Um, there was a sign that I didn't understand. So my relatives, you know, you know, we were all they, like me. They were deaf and um, confident. They were not confident in. Uh, so, but it really started to spread out throughout throughout the family, and um, and and it was not related to being punished by God, or but other parents out there, the hearing perspectives, um, they didn't know much about deafness. They don't know, I didn't know a deaf person, um, and they wouldn't have a deaf baby, and they didn't know where to get services or what to do. So, um, and it's still occurring now. People, you know, are still worried about having deaf babies or deaf children, and so um, it's time for that to change and, and, and for the deaf community to grow. And this is Aleem here. I wanted to add something to that. I remember uh, when I moved to India and, you know, I, I ran into a lot of deaf people. Actually, no, scratch that. I ran into a lot of hearing people because as I was approaching different companies, I uh, got to see, um, you know, I had people that hearing people that would say hi. And I'd say, no, no, I'm deaf, not HI, hearing impaired, sorry, interpreter error. So it, it, hearing impaired. And I had to change that to know I'm deaf. And so I realized, you know, um, the importance of spreading awareness is not going, you know, making this impact here and there, but within the schools where it's not provided. So we need to provide better education uh, on these topics. Uh, that's a problem um, today. Um, to see, you know, and what we want to do is portray that in different movies using uh, deaf leaders. And we want this to, you know, to grow. Uh, last question here. Um, Raul, okay. Uh, hearing impaired, that term hearing impaired, um, that that comes from the government and they, and they use that. And I tried to change that um, to uh, the terminology of being deaf. And and so in the, in the government is um, still ignoring us. Um, so they're still using that term hearing impaired and we're trying to get together and, and revolt against that word word. And, um, we prefer the word deaf, not hearing impaired. Um, and so, uh, the government is uh, refusing and not under really, um, complying and not really understanding why. And the big problem is that, um, there's a lot of, uh, the problem is, is that deaf people don't know how to really read the laws. So it's hard to fight and how to make progress against the government. It's harder. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, the deaf community learns about the system and, 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 um, learns about laws and, and that we can start to, uh, create change with the government. And this is Aleem. Um, and, you know, HI, meaning hearing impaired. So what we need to do uh, is change that to uh, interpreter. I mean, I, I, I'm just, just making a joke here, but um, from, from here on out, uh, we've seen a lot of change. And uh, we want to make that connection to uh, Indian Sign Language. So this is hard to... Um, I'm really motivated. Music really motivates me and, and to, to, uh, interpret music. So I'm looking in, uh, I, in the past I didn't. And so I, now I'm seeing that, um, music is, um, translated. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm translating and interpreting, uh, music, uh, artistically. And I see a lot of other countries doing it and, uh, that's a real passion of mine and I want to do that. And, um, and America has that. And I want to bring it here, more of that, and do uh, ISL uh, music. And I, hopefully I can do more of that in the future. Aleem here. Yes, I really hope to see more of that, more deaf Indian um, music being made. I, I really hope for that. And Rahul, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I want to have more deaf people be um more brave to be free to, you know, be confident, um, use their language with confidence and they're not to hide like they did in the past or uh, have a negative um, connotation or negative perspective on us and, and not feel like that they can and they weren't brave enough. And I'm seeing more and more, um, you know, skill people's skills growing, uh, awareness growing 
it's improving and I'm hoping that continues uh, in the future. <clears throat> um, and as that grows, uh, the deaf community becomes more ind independent, uh, communication skills improve. And I'm, that's what I'm hoping for the future. And I'm already seeing some of that. Um, we're not going back. And I can see there are future changing for the better. Yes, we're moving forward. We can, we can uh, change that. We're going to stay positive. We're not going to look back. Um, uh, and, and the bottom line is, is it's education is the foundation. Uh, we change the uh, improve, change and improve the edu education system, um, ISL, teachers learning ISL, and it's going to impact uh, the growth of the deaf community overall. And the education is so important. And this is Aleem here. Yes, thank you so much. I, I'm envisioning here in India, there's 40 deaf schools all in, in all of India. And I'm really just um, eager to go to these schools to see how these teachers are teaching. Um, I mean, I have seen some, and it's, it's really sad, uh, the language that is, is not there, it's not accessible. You know, the teachers don't learn how to teach in both, um, in, you know, to teach bilingualism. Um, I think all the schools need to have, they have a right, all schools have a right to learn ISL, uh, Indian Sign Language, as well as written, right? That way they can grow better as a person. And I know secondly, in India, one of my other goals is to mainstream, be all inclusive, you know, get the government, get them involved. You know, I see this right now and I just, gosh, with the deaf people working with uh, other disabilities, uh, one one way is to to mainstream it, be all inclusive. If everybody un, uh, learns ISL, right, then it's completely inclusive. You know, that way we won't have the need to pull in an interpreter, right? Because everybody speaks ISL or uses ASL to communicate. So I feel like uh, we need to invest more in getting deaf individuals into these schools so that we can again spread awareness for ISL. Rahul had your hand up. Um, yes. Um, oh, on the over, you know, we we talk about inclusivity, um, and what does that really mean? So does that mean um, the hearing? You know, the people who um, okay, hold on one second. I'm I fell behind a little bit. Were we talking about inclusive inclusivity? So now in India, um, they look, uh, inclusivity means we bring an interpreter in and that's inclusive. And so the way I look, you know, the teacher's talking and then the interpreter's interpreting and they think that's um, being inclusive. That's not the true meaning of inclusivity. Inclusivity means that the teacher is signing in an all involved in teaching the curric full curriculum and everything um, you and you know, and maybe not having the hearing influence and so much, and having more of deaf teachers or teachers using ISL. That's true inclusive, inclusivity. They don't, they don't think um, that they think that inclusivity includes uh, only having an interpreter, and that's not full inclusivity. So the government is requiring uh, more inclusivity. Um, you know, so if, um, they have villages that are very far away from the city and, you know, that we have farms out there and they don't have accessibility. So we're trying to, how are we going to get them more involved and included? And we, wa we want to get everybody included. So the government, um, that's their kind of perspective. My perspective on inclusivity is very different. This is Hardeep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely different perceptions to everything here. And then this is Aleem, um, uh, Raul, you're right. Um, we're trying to make that, that shift, right? Uh, all inclusivity, including sign, right? Amer uh, ISL, Indian Sign Language. That way we can provide support to our own communities without bringing in outside help. So if everyone learns ISL within the community, um, then that then that's what we're saying as far as or that's what we mean when we say inclusivity. Yeah, so the bilingualism, um, 
that sign in writing, that's bilingualism. Their perspective um, in signing is signing and speaking. So that they consider that the bilingualism. Um, so it's it's the writing and the signing. It could be considered um, bilingualism as well. So there's different um, perspectives on this. And uh, so we want to be very clear about the ISL and writing um, and, and, and have that written down in policy that that, that could be um, bilingualism. And we have really no clear definition. So there's a lot of misunderstanding out there on what that means. Aleem here. Yes, I completely agree with you. But hey, so we're running out. Of, we're out of time. I just want to thank you guys for joining us in this hangout. It is 4 a.m. here. <laughs> but thank you guys very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this talk. And uh, thank you for your support. And uh, hopefully India, uh, India grows. Uh, thank you, Convo, for including us. Thank you very much.